Let's get some more analysis though on what to expect from the local market today. Evan Lucas joining us from IG in Melbourne. Evan, good to see you there. Just firstly on uh, what we heard from the uh, China, the third plenum communique. What do you think, I mean, in terms of some of those reforms that have been mentioned? I mean, not a lot of detail there. And of course, this is something that's, you know, uh, over the next 10 years. And also the important thing is how these reforms will actually be implemented. Yeah, I think if you look at it, Bridie, it's probably slightly disappointing to what those sort of China watchers wanted to see. A lot of them really wanted a little bit more liberal, a little bit more open sort of uh, reforms coming through. Having a look, the three that were really sort of forecasted coming out from what we'd seen from Singha, the state-owned uh, media company, was that there was going to be an easing of one-child policy, an increase in urbanisation, and hopefully also an increase in private equity abilities. Now, it's the last one that looks like it is slightly disappointing. The communicate, it is very vague, and, and I will be open with that. It is, it is a vague thing. They were saying that basically it, China will remain a very much a state-owned entity, and that it is basically the fabric of how Chinese economy works. So that is a disappointing sort of wording to hear. It does look like they aren't able to actually sort of change those laws soon it's look it's part of their socialist policy and for that reason it's going to hold one thing that was interesting basically almost in the same paragraph they said they are going to relax and speed up uh, investment into the country which means they do want to see globalization happening and happening faster so that probably relates to particularly the banking sector banking sector is one area they want foreign banks to actually start opening up in the country they do want to sort of move away from their domestic sort of almost monopolization that they have with the five large banks there so that was one good side but it was a little bit disappointing to see that they aren't going to open up completely in saying that they have obviously taken probably what looks like good steps towards urbanization there does seem to be changes towards how they're going to do do, particularly rural ownership they're going to open up farming land particularly to farmers to actually buy and sell land now that'll be the first time since 1949 so when the Communist Party took over that farmers would actually be able to do that and that would boost urbanization and therefore would boost consumption so that that is a good step forward that is a really good thing to see from an Australian centric point of view if China can see consumption increasing over the next 10 to 15 years that would mean products such as agriculture also our, our materials plays would continue to be quite a strong performer over there but all in all it does look quite interesting. It is a little bit weak in terms of information and a little bit disappointing. Other interesting thing was, again, that we're probably going to see in the short term and will be market effective is they are going to continue to do with their fiscal reform system. They do need to see more transparent budgeting and more transparent fiscal movements, and that would mean another crackdown on any sort of uh, shadow banking and material like that as well. So interesting coming out of the communique. It will be a very, very interesting couple of 48 hours. The full details probably due out in the next 48 to almost much as five days. So more to come, but a little bit disappointing with that communique that came out last night.